First one up. Should probably do a shout out on. Uh... Oh, I hate it when they. My Atkins bar broke off into my keyboard. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, let's go to Discord and just let them know I'm here. General, yo. All right. Um, hopefully that won't make too much noise. I'll put it over here. <clears throat> oh, Lena, you're second. Wait a minute. Oh yeah. You are. Okay. Good to see you, Bruce. Um, let's see. Make sure you can see my hands. More interesting you looking at the notes. And we're, we've got a two-pager. Um, I uploaded it last week, uh, was it Friday or something? Pretty early. To the um, Tom's Lesson of PDF. Uh, let me grab the, um, let me grab the link for Discord so you guys can have that. And I'll pin it. The air just kicked on. We had 109 yesterday. And uh, wasn't bad. We actually were sitting out in it. I felt rich like I had a sauna. Ooh, I'm rich. I have a sauna. So we're more interested in the left hand, so I feel bad that you, we don't have this big a picture here as we could, but um, I could chop this up into many pieces and put it at the bottom or at the top or something, uh, but that would be more work than it's worth for all of us. So uh, let's see, Bruce Hook is here. Uh, Jack, Lloyd, good morning. Saying ever, hello to everyone. I uh, don't feel obligated that you have to chat. If you're watching on a phone, I don't even know if you can do it. Can you chat on the phone? I don't know. Yeah, you can chat on the phone app. Gary, good morning, Gary. Is it cooled down a little bit? You said it, you had 87 last Wednesday. That's not. That's too warm for Wisconsin. I agree. And I've been to Wisconsin, but like just a couple times. I've been to Madison, and then I've been just over the border. Um, I can't remember. There's a resort that's just across the Illinois border. Uh, adjust practice score. A bit too close. What do you mean? Is that better or worse? It's pretty much normally where I do it. Let's see. Last week was there. Well, week before. Could have chopped off a little bit on the right there, but you want me to make it smaller like that? I could make it bigger. No, I can't make it bigger because then it cuts me off. Hey, David Sellers is here. Paul Meyer, good to see you, friend. Holly's here. Hi, Holly. Is it still hot up there? It was hot yesterday, but today it's going to be 93, I think. I went running this morning. It was 70 when I went running, which I'm fine with. 
90 on Friday. Wow, that's great. <laughs> yeah, you know, like our cabin in Michigan did not have air conditioning. You just don't need it generally in Michigan. It might get, there were a couple nights where it was tough to sleep because it's like, oh my gosh, so humid or whatever. Yeah, that's hot. That's pretty hot, John, in the UK. So, you know, I was thinking about the, this reading stuff, and it's like, um, you know, I give you my reasons. Oh, the top is clipped off. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, sorry. That's weird. You mean the top where it says the, the title of it? Let me see. Hold on a second. No, I don't want the title on there. I, I just want music on there, so I think we're good. Because um, I'm looking at what you're seeing here, the live shot, and yeah, it's fine. I don't mind that. Well, we just don't have hardly anyone, not that you're not anyone, but we have very few people on right now. <laughs> I mean, this has been a very, very cool year so far. Normally, we would have 100-degree weather in May, and we never got anywhere near that. We barely hit 80 in May. And normally, June is gloom, so this is different from our normal June. June is usually cloudy in the morning, and it's sunny and warm in the afternoon. Uh, but it's just been sunny and warm. It was kind of weird because it was 109 yesterday, but it was real hazy. So I felt like that kind of kept it from feeling like it was really hot. Um, I was in the pool. I think I got wet. There are no chords. Yeah, I didn't write any letter names on it. I'm pretty sure. Let me pull up the, the original here. No, that's not the original. Yeah. You mean the letter names? I, yeah, it wasn't chords before. It was letter names, and I didn't put them on this time. Because this is review. See, that was learning new, new information. If it's new information, I'm going to give you some clues. If it's stuff you should know, I don't give you any clues. Um, I'm doing well, help me. Good to see you. Um, so basically, you know, I, I've said about reading, you know, to play classical guitar generally, you have to read. To be a jazz guitarist, you generally are going to have to learn how to read. Um, not true of everybody. You know, George Benson couldn't read. Um, I guarantee a lot of the original jazz masters couldn't read music necessarily. Although a lot of the... Uh, actually, actually, that's not true uh, because I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, Charlie Parker played in a big band and you, you couldn't memorize. You wouldn't just hear... Or somebody wouldn't just show you that they'd have to put music in front of you. So he he was used to playing in big bands and Coltrane and all those guys. They all started out playing in big bands, and that's how they kind of got their start. So they would have had to be been able to read. Whether they used that throughout their career, I don't know. Um, but yeah, pull up the PDF. You'll see uh, uh, Bruce that there's no um, letter names on top of the notes. Um, and and then I also said that music. Reading is something that pretty much every other musician besides guitar players learn to do. Um, and so it, it allows you to have uh, maybe a, an opportunity to play um, with other musicians where you might not, you know, you can sit down with a flute player and practice or, or you can um, uh, maybe get a gig playing in a, um, and we haven't really talked about rhythm yet because that's going to come into come into serious play, you know, complex rhythms. we got a little bit going on here. But in a, what's called a pit band, for playing for a musical or whatever. I, I remember uh, my, my father-in-law was uh, known in his uh, small town in Indiana as the guy that kind of started up the, the uh, playhouse. And they would do four musicals every summer, three or four musicals every summer. And they had a band, a pit band. And so even no matter how remote you are, Gary, are you listening? <laughs> You know, those opportunities exist uh, where you have somebody uh, builds a, a, a fun playhouse in a barn. Um, it makes it really nice with lighting and staging and, you know, all sorts of stuff. It was pretty, it's pretty cool. They're still doing it. It's kind of a legacy for him. Uh, he passed away a couple of years ago, sadly, uh, and a um, very good friend of mine. 
uh, my father-in-law, and uh, he, uh, yeah, the new PDF is has been up there since Friday. It's it's in the the uh, Tom's lessons of PDFs, um, so you can download that. It's a two pager, so this is the first page. I wanted to because we're it's a review. This is a, a four string review. I showed I'm teaching you some four string chords. I probably should have waited on that, but I, I do it in a way where it's not too hard. Also, you'll notice there's a ton of quarter notes. Um, don't worry about it. You can count each quarter note as a whole note if you want. So we can take each one of these notes and go D, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, F. And we may do it that way, okay? Take us a while, but we may do it that way. Here's, but I, I just thought I was, I was running this morning and I thought, you know, another good reason to learn to read music. I know a lot of you here, not all of you, but a lot of you are older. Some of you are retired. Um, and you're battling that brain thing. Um, and, you know, I often hear, oh, this game is really good. You know, like, um, <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. What's the name of the nine numbers? The ga That game, uh, fudge. I got it on my phone. Um, but uh, Sudoku. Sudoku is supposed to be good for your brain, things like that. I guarantee you, learning something new and memorizing it and making connections, neural connections to physiological connections is is probably very good for brain health all right I'm not a doctor I'm not saying this unequivocally but I I am uh, I'm not even saying unequivocally <laughs> correctly uh, but I am saying that mm. that uh, I imagine that trying to memorize what that first note is and where it is on the guitar it, it requires certain paths you know, electronic paths to happen in your system, and that's got to be good for you, okay? So if for no other reason, it's a new skill, and you'll probably freak out your grandkids or kids or whatever when you go, oh, yeah, I can I can read this. So um, also, uh, I'm, I was working on a video yesterday, a new video to upload. I haven't really uploaded much. Uh, my son Jack's staying here, so it's a little harder to record in my living room because uh, I just don't want to bug anybody, and I don't want anybody walking in, and I have to start over again. Uh, I'll probably record it in here, but I'm right now I'm conceptualizing. I'm getting all the diagrams ready, but I want to do a video on the chromatic scale, um, and I, I don't I didn't see a whole lot up there. Um, it's going to be pretty comprehensive. I hope it's not too long. Um, I could maybe break it into two parts, kind of an introduction to the chromatic scale, and then how to use it musically. Maybe um, uh, I might do that. So. Oh, good, John. I'm glad. Yeah, and and again, if this is baby talk for you, this this uh, music reading, you can always play it up. You can work on playing it up the neck and practice your reading up the neck, which gives you great versatility. Um, uh, you can also change the tempo or whatever. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. You could even, if you wanted to, you could try to harmonize things. You know. I don't know. Okay, Gary, uh, you were in a band with amazing people. He would hear a song, first time figured out you the uh, yep, while the song was playing live. <laughs> yeah, I've played with musicians like that. Yeah, no, I know, I know guys like that uh, too. And and yeah, that's le legitimately, you know, for the most part, us guitar players are kind of dinguses. So we just kind of we're like, oh, it's a sequel. We can do that. Uh, so this the the music reading stuff feels like you know, physics to guitar players a lot of times. But to everyone else, this is how they learn to play music. So the string players, like when I do orchestra sessions, they are so wired differently than, than I am. All the orchestra players, they're very different. They're very serious. They're very like, you know, here's what we do, and this is the proper thing. And guitar players are like, how can I make this sound like a gorilla? <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's totally different. Uh, it's a different, it's a totally, totally different job. Um, and a different way of thinking. And the people that excel at the guitar are the ones that can think outside the box. And the ones that excel um, on the um, on, in the orchestra are the ones that master it uh, to a degree that's pretty pretty impressive. It, you know, the average orchestra player in um, a, a movie score is 
really good. <laughs> so, so there's nothing average about them. So, all right. Um, yeah, and, and here's the other thing, uh, Gary, you can totally s sing this. When, when I was in music school, they worked on our music training, but, or our ear training, but we used music to work on our ear training. We did something called um, sight singing. And so we would read this. Uh, we would have to sing it. And so we would, it's easy if you're going to do a scale like that, but when you start to see it, you know, that next line down, those intervals are, you know, you got a fourth and a third. You're gonna, you, have to, you have to memorize how those sound, and that's part of ear training. Um, and there's actually some really good apps for that. If you want to download an app that will train your ear, it's totally free. Um, you can do that. It'll help you hear minor, major chords, augmented chords, diminished chords, seventh chords, all that kind of stuff uh, as you progress. So those are also, you know, this is not instead of learning to use your ear. This is to supplement it in many ways. Okay, that said, let's get to, let's get to some reading here. Technically, you could say the lesson started in 15 minutes in. Uh, but to be truthful, I think the lesson has been from the get-go. Life lessons. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go really slow. We've got, we've got uh, on the first line, and you'll notice I did repeat signs here, um, bra bracketing sections, uh, sometimes four-bar sections, sometimes eight-bar sections, sometimes not at all. Hey, Oslin. Um, and um, yeah, I think Help Me took off, but... Um, so, um, some of this is, is not particularly too difficult, but basically it's going to be a review. This, this first line here is a review of most of the notes we've learned on the top four strings. Okay. What we can do is I'll call out the note and we'll, we'll play a note and I'll count four beats. So we want a D, two, E, four, two, F, Four, and you just work your way up. Open G four to A four to B four to C four to D four to E four to D four to <laughs> good to see you help me with C four sorry to B four. Eat your lunch. Two, three, four. A. Two, three. Open G. Two, three. Op or F. Here we go. Two, second fret. Eat. Two, three, four. Okay. I I didn't repeat it because it takes so long to do it that way. All right. You ready to try it? Let's try it. It's quarter notes, but I'll go really slow quarter notes. Three. Four. Okay, that's an overview of most of the notes we've learned over the last few weeks. Um, I didn't include F and G. We'll get to that in a second. Um, I didn't include the sh F sharps and the B flat. And those were other notes that we had before. Also, I didn't include the B here. Um, I don't know if I ever really referenced that one. I have to, I can't remember. Maybe on the next page I did. But um, okay. Uh, so that, that phrase, and again, you can p take, break these up into like, you don't have to practice this whole, both pages in one day. You could practice that, the next line, and the next line, the first day, and maybe the next day. And then the next day, you maybe do those three lines in the next two sets or whatever. And then the fifth day, you add the chords that I wrote down there before. The second page, which we'll get to, is really me just kind of trying to, trying to give you randomness, uh, kind of a mental and physical exercise. Hey, is I is. Good to see you, my friend. Um, so that, that, um, that, um, will be, um, 
uh, you know, the benefit of the next page would be just really just a random study thing that you can go, go back to. I uh, will probably create another one of those um, when I get to all six strings. Once we have all six strings done, we'll probably jump to there and um, you'll have another page or maybe even two pages of just pure randomness that you can really put your memory to the test, okay? All right, so the next line, uh, bar five through uh, bar eight, is just the top four strings open. So we don't even need our left hand. So you can be totally holding your coffee and playing this. And part of what I wanted you to see here is how the strings spread out over the over the over the music notation, okay? So I've open D, open G, open B, open E, back to E, B, G, D. Then I kind of alternate them. D to B, G to E. If I were playing this really fast, I might use alternate picking. G, B, D. But if I'm playing this slow, I'll just do all down strokes. Bar nine, descending. Bar 10, D, B, G, E, D, B, oh no, E, sorry, G, B, D. Now if you listen to bar 10, it's N, B, C, okay? That interval, the B to the, I'm sorry, the D to the B, is what's called a major sixth. And that's the beginning of the N, B, so anytime you want to try to, you see a six, you just think NBC and you can maybe sing it. <laughs> when, when I did um, uh, uh, when I was in school, especially in high school, we were doing uh, sight singing, um, that, th they would teach you those kind of tricks. You know, like there were, uh, like uh, a fourth was the, the wedding march. Mm -hmm. Right, um, a, a major seven. Was that? Is that no? So a tritone was Maria. Um, I'm trying to think what a major seventh. A minor seventh was Star Trek. Right, something like that. Um, so you would learn all these kind of tricks of. Uh, uh, a whole step would be the start of the scale. A third would be, you know, a fifth. I would always think, for some reason, when I heard, when I saw a fifth written and we had to sing a fifth, I would think, oh, ee, oh, oh, ee, oh, from, from Wizard of Oz. <laughs> it's actually, oh, ee, oh, oh, ee, oh, way down there. So, um, yeah, we could we could do a lesson on that, but I, my, my sulfate side singing is awful. Now, and uh, we've got some Europeans here. We've got, uh, let's see, who's who's on right now from, well, Isaias, I'm curious if you, when you did Solfage as a kid, you know, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, Le, La, Ti, Do, let's see, who's, who's here from England? Where's, uh, I, saw, I know, I know, oh, Jack, it's 102, dang. Oh, uh, John, Kindit, right? John, aren't you? No, wait, David Sillers is in, in, in uh, Scotland. Um, but in America, we would do movable dough. So dough would be whatever, if we were in the key of D, D would be dough. Do, re, mi, fa, so. If we were in the key of C, C would be dough. Do, re, mi, fa, so. If we were in B flat, do, re, mi, fa, so. So we had what's called a movable dough. Dough would be one no matter where you went, okay? And in Europe, they would teach it with a fixed dough. So dough could only be C. Do, re, mi, fa, so if you did D major scale, it would have to go re, re, mi, fi. I think F sharp was fa, sharp was fi. Do, uh, re, mi, fi. Do, re, mi, fa, so, fi, so. You know, in other words, if you said to a kid in Europe, sing do, they would sing a C note. They, they, they had a much higher, greater uh, propensity towards uh, perfect pitch. Uh, and it's fascinating. I, uh, Rick Beato talks a lot about perfect pitch. His son, Dylan, is freaking insane. I'm sure you've seen those videos of him playing these, like, 
multi poly chords and and he, not only will he write out every note on a staff two octave you know the piano staff he will sing every note and then he says okay now sing an f sharp in there which doesn't belong in there at all and he'll say what you know say say hey i did it and it was accidental uh but he'll sing an f sharp it's like crazy um so solfage though but with solfage um did you do solfage is do re mi fa sol that's what that's referencing did, uh Lena, did you do fixed dough or did you do movable dough? And where did you learn it? What, were you in the States or were you out of this country at that time? Yeah, so Isaiah has learned the same way I did. Um, so dough is whatever one is, which is fine. But it's interesting that I, I think in America, the kids didn't pick it up as fast as they went. Eh, we'll do it the easy way. Don't worry about it, kids. <laughs> in fact, when I was in school, they even let us get away with la, 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 la. They didn't even make us do the do re mi stuff, so, which is pretty funny because it was like, oh, yeah, I don't want to work that hard. Okay, we don't want to make you work that hard here. <laughs> it's just like, dang it. Yeah. Hey, Dan, Dan, dude, good to see you. You had a movable dough in China, see? Just like us. Okay, interesting. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of fascinating. Okay, I would have thought they would have done fixed dough in China. But, because uh, I always think of Chinese people as being super duper smart. <laughs> so, I'm always making fun of Americans. <laughs> Sorry, all you Americans. We're all Americans. Everyone's an American. Okay. All right. So, in the bar nine, we've got D, E. Uh, Gary, we are going to have a C note, so probably going to have to finger this F sharp with our pinky. But anyway, we have D, E, F, F sharp, open G, A, B flat, third finger, open B. You notice the natural sign, because that B flat would carry to the end of the line, to the end of the bar. C, D, open E, F first fret, F sharp second fret, G, and then D, jump down to there and play the open G, and then go back down to the D there and go back again. E, okay, F, F sharp with the pinky, open G, A, B flat, open B. Again, this is kind of just a review. We're just going through many of the notes we've learned. In fact, this one pretty much covers all the notes we've learned in the last, uh, how many weeks has this been? Five or six weeks that we've been talking about reading music, okay? So that bar, bar nine would be a good one to, to make sure you practice every day, just to kind of, just a good, and you can say the letter names of the notes if you want to. I don't have a problem with that. I just don't want you, if you want to write the letter names on there, uh, do it on a separate piece of paper from the one you're reading. So you can print up two copies of this, uh, write the letter names, the fingerings, all that stuff, as kind of a little test or a quiz for you, um, and then um, uh, and then practice. Try to practice using this one without any of the clues. I know it's hard, uh, but, and it tests your brain. But that's kind of the whole point. Okay, let's do this one more time, and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, um, two, three, four. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little faster, but I'm gonna give. Uh, We'll give four beats to each note. So we're going to treat these as whole notes, okay? Two, three, four, D. Two, three, four, E with the second. Two, three, four, keep your eye on the music. Look ahead. Three, four. Look ahead, start thinking. Three, four. Look ahead. Three, four, A. Look ahead, B flat, four. You can play B flat with your pinky if you want, or you can play it open. Two, three, four. Two, three, four, D. Now we're to the open E string. Four. Two, three, four, F. And again, if this is too easy, play it in a different position. F sharp, two, three, four, G. Two, three, down to D. Down to G. Three, four. Good. Now, um, one of the things I like about this B as opposed to the open B, for one thing, you have less control over open strings. So if you're playing a melody, 
Um, and it's like, you know, right? Um, and I'm using mostly open strings there. One, uh, open G, open B, open E. That's nice. It's almost bluegrassy, right? Okay. But the nice thing about fretting something like that is you have control over each note. You have more control over the notes if you can get your finger on it. I can, I can give a vibrato on that E note or this B note that I can't do without... I can behind the nut if I want. Oftentimes I've done that and just snapped the string right there. <laughs> okay, no worries. Good to see you, help me. Thank you so much. And good karma, good to see you. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you've loved everything. Yeah, you can lurk all you want. I don't care. <clears throat> Steve Berry's in the house. Good morning. Catherine's in the house. Catherine's got the 87 inch TV. When I do this, it kind of like freaks her out. <laughs> I think Lena's that way too. Okay. So now the next thing I want, let's go just brief. Let's look at the, the next eight bars. Okay. Because the thing that's, that I'm kind of, I kept it very simple melodically in this phrase. So I thought about what I'm doing here. Okay. Uh, each one of these is, um, you know, trying to teach you something new. Each one of these phrases is, is working a different mental or uh, physical muscle, all right? Um, and so what I want to do first off is I want to look at those five notes that, I, that we're playing. There's only five notes. We have D, open D. And again, so I'm kind of mainly here reviewing the D string we just learned last week. So this is... This is a good one for if you feel like, okay, this is a little overwhelming to learn all this. Okay, this is a good one to work on. But this one is going to have rhythmic variations. And it's interesting because these are rhythmic variations that are going to come into play when we start reading 16th notes and 8th notes and things like that. Okay? Um, and so uh, I'll explain that in a second. But we have, in the first bar we have D, open D. In the second bar we have F. In the, in the third bar we have E. Then we have G in the fourth bar, and then we have F again for two bars, and an A for two bars, okay? So we're basically D, F, E, G, F, A. So I'm kind of doing the D minor scale, the first five notes, alternating in by thirds, like that, okay? That's musically, uh, melodically, what's happening in this these eight bars, okay? But rhythmically, what's happening here is I'm mixing it all up, but I'm doing it at such a, with such higher uh, with uh, at a, such a slower tempo using quarter notes and half notes um, that it really doesn't feel that complex. But I'm going to show I'm going to play this for you right now. If you want to, you can try to read along. Okay, two, three, four. <laughs> Uh, three, one, three. Okay. Now, if I were to play that a much faster, like for example, if I made those quarter notes eighth notes, then you have two eighth notes. And if I if I if I have the value of each of these notes, it, it could be played exactly the same tempo. We, I mean, the same speed as we just played it. The tempo would have to be half as fast as what we just did. So if I was playing at 100, you put the tempo down to 50 and, and turn those quarter notes into eighth notes and the half notes into quarter notes, then you would, um, uh, then you would um, have the exact same thing musically. But if I left the tempo at 100, then these, it would be twice as fast. <laughs> And that 
would be considered a syncopated rhythm. If I were to write this out, and I may come back when we get to when we start getting into reading syncopated rhythms in eighth notes, I may come back and rewrite this out at the faster speed. The great thing about it, it will only take up four bars instead of eight bars. If I were to if I were to have the value of the notes again, and so the eighth notes or the quarter notes become sixteenth notes. So they became eighth notes and then quarter notes, or eighth notes and then sixteenth notes, and the half notes become quarter notes and eighth notes. And then, then it would be one, two. Let's see. Uh, there's the one, two, three, and so. The, what I always suggest is if you've got some 16th note syncopations that are like, oh my gosh, what the heck? I don't know how to read this. Ah, uh, you do. Just double the value, maybe even double the value again, and you'd end up with this. Um, I, I wish I'd written it out in, in six, so you could see it. Uh, do I have any music paper handy? I don't think so. Um, but I could I could show you, you know, and like how much more complex it is. Um, let's see. How hard would that be to do? In, I have oh, I don't have Logic open even, so never mind. If I had Logic open, I could have printed up a chart real quick. But if I if I have the value of the notes twice, okay, if I have the value of the notes twice and those quarter notes became sixteenth notes, then all of that music would fit into two bars. That eight bar phrase would fit into two bars. And you would look at that two bar and you go, oh my gosh, I can't read this. And then it's just like, no, relax, double the value. Oh, okay, I can almost read that, double it again. Oh, so then you, what you do is you, 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 you write it out in some simple, like if you've really got a difficult rhythmic passage to work out on your on some music for whatever reason, oh, is 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 leaving, bummer. I, I showed him this book, I think, the Brazilian guitar book. Uh, these things fry my brain. I mean, it's just the, they tie up my fingers in knots. Oh, look. Oh yeah, his. But if if I, uh, um, yeah, if I look at you know I've got some music. You got I got some sixteenth notes here, or whatever. But um, that's not that that wasn't that hard. But um, the hard part on that stuff is I'm playing I'm transposing because I'm playing bazooki or something uh, or oud or whatever. Um, oh, John's here. Hey, John. Oh, no, you've been here. Um, you just noticed each other. Yeah, and we haven't gotten to middle C yet. Middle C will be on the next the next week's lesson. Okay, M middle C is the note below the D that we start out this whole lesson with. It's Middle C is actually on, um, uh, uh, on the... Um, First ledger line that we're gonna we're gonna get to. We're gonna have to learn three notes with ledger lines next week, okay? And it takes a while to get used to ledger lines. Now the first three notes A B C not too bad. I get some. I I you know it's it it definitely gets hard when you get down to D or C way down there an octave below C. Uh, those ledger lines for guitar uh, in in piano that would be written on the bass clef. So you just be reading bass clef. But for guitar, if I get those low notes, it's I have to really kind of Generally, what I do in those situations is I read the intervals, and I go if I'm going down C and there's no C, I, just, I go low B. Now here's David. This is interesting though. Um, technically, this is middle C on the guitar. So that note that the third note in bar two, that C is actually middle C. And guitar is written up an octave from what it sounds. Um, and that's sometimes somebody will send me a guitar chart written in exactly. Guitar is actually a fairly low instrument, um, and we have a good range. Um, but uh, it's um, they write it down an octave, so we're not reading bass clef and reading to, or piano clef or lots of ledger lines. So it's kind of written to to accommodate kind of the middle of the neck. All right, so let's try this bar 13 again. Boy, it's going to take a while to get through all this, isn't it? Especially with me yapping. All right, here we go. Two, three, four. Oh, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play D the whole time. We're not going to change notes. You got that? So don't, so don't change your notes. Just play the rhythms. 
Okay, we're gonna go pretty slow, but this this is another thing you can do um, if you're if you're throwing a difficult passage of music. This is seventy five. You can get rid of all the notes and just read the rhythms, and that's what we're gonna do right now. So here's seventy five, and we're just gonna play the rhythms using the D string. So we don't even need to use the left hand. We can drink coffee with our left hand. Or uh, if you're in England, a beer or wine or something. Two, three, four. difficult take one of the elements out of the equation get it down and then add that element back in let's say this was really fast Got the rhythm down at a, at a fast tempo at the, at the song's tempo, uh, maybe even go past the song tempo. So if the song is 100, go to 110, 120, get the, get the rhythm down at a faster tempo. And then when you add the notes back in, it'll feel slow because you're going to go back to the maybe the 80, you're going to go below and then work your way back up to the official tempo of 100, for example. Uh, this is pretty advanced stuff in some ways, uh, as far as like taking a piece of music and, and trying to learn it if it's too difficult for you. But there's definitely many, many ways to simplify something until you can get it down. But so, oops, oh, that was right. It's very musical, actually. the The rhythms, the the, uh, the patterns are all over the place, uh, but it makes it interesting. If if this if it were just that's fine, but it's not as interesting as. Okay, so that again, that's a good. Basically, an exercise in syncopation, but syncopation slowed down so much, uh, notated in such a way that it doesn't really feel like syncopation. And we'll get to the we'll get to syncopated rhythms. We may do syncopated rhythms, and we will be just playing one note at first. Or I might do something like. I might make a add a note here or there and, and make it more complex. But uh, anyway, okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to just do a kind of a review of the D string and the G string, and we're going to create dyads, which we didn't do before. And we're going to create dyads, which are two notes chords, and we're just going to come up with them. And we can come up with a value for them. I don't have a problem at all saying, oh, this is basically this chord. Um, I can do that with every one of these, all right? So the first one in bar 21 is just open D and open G. And then together. And that basically implies a G chord. There's no third in there, there's no B in there. It's got the D and the B, I'm sorry, the D and the G. Uh, so it's the fifth and the root, root is on top. You might say that's a second inversion G chord, but uh, we're not talking inversions right now. Okay, the next bar, all I did was I kept the D on the bottom the same. We only have two notes technically on the, uh, on the, on the G string that we're using that, would, uh, that are non-flat, non-sharps. And that's G and A. So now we're going to do the D, open D, and then A. And then together. Okay, so let's do the first bar again. Kind of a G chord. Kind of 
a D chord, right? Okay. Then we have this. We're going to go, now we're going to go to the E note here. And we're going to hit open G. And together. So E and G. And that implies an E minor chord. So, so far we've got a song that's like... And then uh, and this, we could imply a D minor too. It doesn't have to be G, G major. And this could also technically imply a C chord. Uh, but anyway, we have G, uh, E, G, and then E, G together. Okay, and then we're going to do E and A. And this is a situation where we probably wouldn't lie to, lay our finger down. We just do this. Okay, like we're making an A minor chord. And that's kind of what this one implies. We have E and A, and then together kind of implies an A minor chord or an A major chord. The third, so we don't know. Kind of wherever you want to go with it. Okay, uh, not a bad way to actually write a song is to sit down and come up with some very simple dyads and then try to go, okay, what chord do I hear that as? Do I hear the E and the G as E minor or do I hear it as a C? And you can come up with... That's kind of a cool progression that I might not have normally come up with. Okay. Um, okay, so let's read that that phrase, uh, those four bars, okay? D, G, D, G together. D, A. E, G. And E, A. Pretty simple review of the, those two strings, okay? Let's go to the next. We have basically we have six iterations that we can do here. Now we can do the with F on the bottom, we can do open G and open A. Those are our next two iterations. So we have D and G. I'm sorry, uh, we have F and G. And that's the start of chopsticks. Okay? That kind of implies a G7 chord. Just so you know. Okay, D. But there's no third there. It could imply a G minor seven, I guess. Um, so, and then D and A, which I mean, I'm sorry, F and A, which definitely implies an F chord. Okay, so we have, if we go from the beginning, we have G to what was that? Uh, D, D E minor, A minor, G seven, F. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a weird chord progression. Uh, but these are just little dyads. So dyads don't always tell you everything you need to know. They, they leave a bit to the imagination. Um, a lot of guitar players use dyads all the time. The edge. You know, I can do this little A to... That could, could imply that progression. Could imply... several different progressions because I'm only playing two notes and that's the simplicity of it. Um, a lot of uh, <laughs> worship guitar players, electric guitar players, will just, will just manipulate pretty much they can cover any chord with just doing that. You know, oh, okay, we're going to the, uh, we're going to a D chord, okay, I'll do this. Oh, we're going to the A chord, okay, I'll do this. Oh, F sharp minor, I'll stay on this. Oh, E, okay, well that's a little different. Maybe, maybe I'll do that, you know, or whatever. But uh, yeah, you can make, take a dyad, make a very, very subtle change to it and accommodate pretty much any chord. Okay, now, uh, the last bit, all I did was I went... Okay, so bar 27 and 28 is F and G. Why does it sound like I'm cussing? F and G, and then, or F and G, and then E, G, D, G, both open, and then D, A. Okay, uh, what would that imply? Kind of a... G7 to C to G to D. It's kind of weird. Or D minor. Hey, Bops New York. Yeah, dyads are great for writing. Um, you know, and you can take, you know, like I could. all day long. 
Um, Orlando by John Dallin. Oh, uniform reasonably easy read and downloadable. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's it's uh, uh yeah. A lot of the Dallin stuff is pretty. Uh, John Dallin with a D, right? Um, 1600s is right. It should be public domain. Although if you publish it and you do some arrangement or something of it, then sometimes technically that's technically not public domain. Um, but um, okay, so um, I'm going to go, I'm going to read 21 through 28 again, just, and if you want to, you can join me. I'm just going to do it one time. Okay. Three, four. to read actually and they it's a great intro to reading stacks of chords which we're getting ready to do but don't worry that's, these aren't going to be as hard as they look um and uh and they're going to be beautiful chords so we're going to have some fun with this but um <clears throat> the uh um <clears throat> sorry my brain shut off but the uh yeah so the dyads are almost you know like okay I, you can start to see reading stack chords and we did triads last lesson or two lessons ago uh, oh, no, it was two lessons ago here. So you want to go back to that lesson, you get a lot. And this is page two. Uh, we had two pages of these. Um, and really, if you, you know, again, you when when I'm reading stuff like this, just to give you a heads up on reading again, reading is one of those things where there's there's two types of reading. There's reading to learn a piece. And then there's sight reading at a gig or a session. Okay, that, that the second thing is more of a professional thing. The first thing is for beginners on up. Okay, so, but regardless of whether you're reading to learn a piece as a beginner or you're reading in a session, what, what I often do when I see these, like if I look at the very top chord up there, I see the G and the B and the E, and I see it again, and then I notice in the next bar only one note's changed. Okay, that's what you look for. You look for, you, tr you, you think, and in this case, I, I mentioned it two weeks ago, but we've got three voices. You think them as voices, uh, soprano, alto, and tenor, and then the bass isn't there yet. Uh, we're we're going to get the bass today, but um, bass, bass, tenor, alto, soprano, S-A-T-B is how it's notated in music circles, S-A-T-B, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and... Um, uh, you'll notice, like, you know, oh, okay, wait a minute, the E and the G are the, still the same in bar three, but the C went up to D. Well, that's an interesting... And then back down to C. Okay, so you can... Um, uh, you can... What you do is you kind of look through the chords. You don't read the stacks like this. Okay, again, I've mentioned this many times before. When I was a kid, I went to a very experimental, progressive grade school in Washington, D.C., and they were trying out all the new technologies, and they said, you know, oh, no kids, so, no, uh, phonics is old school, that's what, how their grandkid parents learned how to read, that's not right, we got, we got to do sight reading, you memorize words, and so we learned sight reading, they would hold up a card, and we'd memorize that word, and we'd hold up another card, and it was awful, it was horrible, worst way to learn how to read, and consequently, I read for five minutes, and I almost fall asleep every time, because I'm reading every word like this. So I get so tired because I'm reading like this. In music, they didn't teach us like that. They taught us to read through the music, which is how you read when you learn um, uh, phonics, you read through words and words become sentences and sentences become paragraphs. And anyone who you know can read quickly and seamlessly and effortlessly reads that way. And, uh, and so I, you know, I can't, I, I didn't learn that way. They jacked me up. Uh, and I'm sure all those teachers are gone now, but, uh, you know, they, I'm sure they went back to phonics because it wasn't working. Um, but we, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what you want to do when you're reading music is you really want to read through things, even when you're reading stacked chords, which is not particularly common in guitar notate music. Okay. I'm going to tell you that now in classical guitar music. Yeah. Uh, but generally you would see a slash and an E minor seven or something like that. Okay. Not what I have written there with a bunch of notes. 
Uh, but doesn't mean it's not a great way to learn to read uh, chords and it's not useful and also it helps you learn harmony and music theory. Okay, so let's look at this first chord, bar 29. <laughs> it's just, where's my pick? Where did, oh, here it is. I put it on the piano. Okay, try to pick my piano. All right, you know, every guy has his girl, but a guitarist has his pick. Huh? Huh? All right. <laughs> it was a bumper sticker. Sounds like a bumper sticker. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, what was it? Uh, Dimitri Martin said, hey, I love bumper stickers. He goes, I love bumper stickers. They're a fast way of saying, hey, let's never hang out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dimitri Martin's funny. He said, uh, what is it? Bulletproof, bulletproof vests save you from bullets. Uh, life vests save you from drowning. And Sweater vests save you from pretty girls. <laughs> okay. See, see you, Gary. Oh, he's already gone, probably. Um, okay. So here's uh, bar 29. is just the four strings open. D, G, B, E. And if you play them all together, you've got E minor 7. Okay. Now, the only change I'm going to make in the next bar is I'm instead of playing D, I'm going to play an E. So I have an E a G, a B, and an E, and I play them all together and I have E minor. Okay? So you can see, I, I separate them individually, and then I play them all together. Okay? Then um, bar 33 is D, G, open, open B, and an F on top, and that's a G7 chord. If we wanted, we could put F sharp on top, and it would be G major 7. G, or D, G, B, and F sharp. And you can practice, if you want to, uh, to understand the theory of 7th chords a little bit better. You can practice putting those notes in order, or playing them in order. Um, so that you can uh, think of them as root, third, fifth, and seventh. For example, the root of a G7 chord is G. Then the next note after G is B. And the next note is D, so we have to go down to D. And then the next note is F. So in order, G, B, D, F. Or, which is not huge. On piano, that's super easy, but on guitar, it's a, that's a bit of a stretch. Okay, that's why we like these. Technically, this is a drop two chord. I have a whole series, huge series of lessons on drop two chords. Technically, it's a much better way of playing G seven or a seventh chord than this, especially if you're trying to play fast. Oops, I'm looking at the screen instead of my hands. Uh, the next inversion of this, so I've got G B D F. The next inversion would be B, D, F, and a G, okay? That would be literally this. That's just ridiculous, so that's much easier. That's why they came up with drop two chords. We all we swapped these two notes here. Okay. All right. Dennis is in the house. What? Dennis, were you in time for my Dimitri Martin joke? Mm. Or <laughs> David's telling you got a new miter saw. Nice for and of uh, for framing. Oh, very nice. I don't have a miter saw. You're talking about just like a, a hand one, not a machine one. Miter box, miter saw. That'd be kind of a fun thing to have, actually. I do have some trim work. I should have I should who who should come over and help me with the trim work? I got some trim work in the house that they I felt like they just kind of did a half baked job of. Oh, oh, uh, Bruce Googled it. Okay, good. You know what? We could, well, somebody want to post it in, in uh, uh, up on, on the Discord, do that. Do, I would do that, David, instead, if you can upload it to that, instead of sending copy to anyone individually. Okay, let's go to the next, the next one, uh, bar, what is that, 34, 5? D, open, G, open, B, open, and then G on top. 
Okay, and that's still G chord. Okay, the next one's a little bit more, more involved, but it's one, a chord you've played a thousand times or more. E, then open G, and then C, and then open E. And that's the top four strings of a C chord. Okay? Now, if we just, instead of playing E on the bottom, we play F on the bottom. We have F, G, C, E. I love this chord, F major ninth. Technically, there's no third in there, so we don't know that it's a major. It could be, it could be a minor, but I, but it really kind of implies this beautiful, beautiful chord. And I love that chord. If you if you can try to finger it up the neck, so instead of C, you can for A. So I can do it over an A chord. I'm just taking this chord and I'm just moving up the fret part. It's a beautiful chord. Okay, now the next one I thought you might enjoy these two. These are just kind of for fun, a little bit of reading exercise. So we have an F sharp, look at that. And Gary's not in the house, I think Gary took off. We can go ahead and play this F sharp with our third finger, or you can play with your fourth if you want to work on strengthening your pinky, you could do that. Uh, but if you can't get the G string to ring out underneath it with the pinky, you might want to use your third. Or it may actually be easier, because the pinky's a smaller finger and it takes up less space, it might be easier to get the G string to ring out with that E there, with the pinky on the F sharp. But I'm basically just playing the fourth fret of the fourth string, and then the rest, the rest of the string's open. And that's an E minor second. And that F sharp kind of wants to resolve. Young and the Restless, right? I have a vague memory of the 70s. Uh, not that I did drugs in the 70s. It was just a long time ago, people. Come on. I was a kid. <laughs> I was born in 61, so I, well, I guess I could have been doing some stuff in the 70s, but I didn't. In fact, I, I had long hair, and I was a musician in junior high and high school, right? And about five years after I graduated high school, apparently a lot of the teachers there and a lot of the peep staff there or whatever got arrested and thrown in federal penitentiary for being the cocaine distribution center for all of the Midwest. So I guess you, if you got cocaine in Detroit, Chicago, Cincinnati, wherever, Louisville, it came through my high school. Yet never once was I ever approached to, to use or buy drugs. Uh, so I don't know. It's just like, really? It kind of shocked me. I was, I was like, I got long hair and uh, I got saved when I was 13. So I, I kind of made it my... Uh, personal mission not to do any of that stuff. And I didn't drink or anything like that. Oh, Dave, uh, oh, David, does frame me. Okay. You have a painting in Texas since last week. Oh, got a copy. I'll put it. Yeah, do that. Oh, you got the copy. Put this quick. You, uh, you do framing. That's cool. I'm, I'm impressed that you have all your fingers. <laughs> okay. So I love that chord. Though. This is a gorgeous chord. You can also do it this way. That would be um, if, well, D, so G major, that was G major 7. This, I would still probably see that as G major 7. Um, if you put the E and the F sharp, that would be the same as kind of that, but with the, the F sharp high instead of down low. The beauty of having the F sharp here is you get this, this half step thing between the F sharp and the G, this chromatic voicing, this, this semitone in the middle of the chord. If you want to add the B down here and hit the low E, you get a six-string version of it. Um, hold on a second. I'll write it down here so you have it to, you can see it. Yeah, it's been pretty much in the 20s the whole time here. Um, e minor, what did I call that? E minor second. You could do it. Whoops. Zero, two, four, zero, zero, zero. There you go. So, um... Thank you. 
So yeah, that's a, that's the E minor second. It's a beautiful chord. Um, and then there's another one we could do E minor ninth, which is we have the seventh in there too. So we have the F sharp, open G, D, and open E, which I like this. It's a really cool voicing because you've got a minor second and a major second. No thirds in there at all. We have a G to D, which is the fifth. Yeah, and probably we can even find the PDF, Holly, on, online and just upload it, too. If it's public domain, I don't... Well, I don't... It's, I'm, what, Discord is the one that needs to be concerned about that, not us. So, okay. All right, so that's, that's page one. Okay, now let me delete this. I'm going to pull up page two. I don't know that we'll go all the way through page two. Again, page two was mainly just me randomizing what the four strings are so that you can be practicing them. Uh, I think this is it. Yep. They're just a lot of notes. Okay. No repeat signs. Nothing like that. It's just pure. There, there's. It's pseudo melodic. I'm gonna play. I'll play it. I'll read it down right now. I'm just sorry reading this. I have. I haven't seen this since I created. I think on Friday. Is that when I? When did I upload this? I'm sure it has a date. Because I think I uploaded it right away. Uh, oh, the 12th. So what was that? Was that Saturday night? Oh, Gardner's Day. No, that was Friday, I think. I don't know. I'm losing track of time. Today's the 16th. So it's been up there for a good four days. Oh, yeah, that the Gardner being here reminds me that... Um, that doesn't really help. Okay. <clears throat> Kind of reminds me that uh, we talked about moving. Is Monday awful for people, anybody? Uh, they're not. We don't have a lot of our. Everybody's not up here. Um, is Monday bad? I mean, you can always watch later. But I know that so many of you like the interaction and the the, the family and the uh, as it were. Um, the um, community, as it were. Oh yeah, the bond chord. Wait, what do you? Oh, you you did you wrote it backwards? Yeah, I'm like Catherine. What do you? Yeah, that's a fun chord, isn't it? And that's an E minor. Um, so an E minor ninth with a major seventh, or E major seventh add nine, or whatever. Uh, but it's got a minor third and a major seventh. So it could be could be a pretty E major. Uh, this is. Yeah, on acoustic, this one's hard, but I like the Elvis chord too, which would be zero, 11, 11, 11, 12, 12. You can also play here, but I like this one because it ends up, has the root on top. Might do something like that. Kind of fun. Um, yes, and yeah, definitely more elegant than the E minor chord. Yeah, yeah, that dissonance. But the interesting thing about the dissonance, right? You hear it. It kind of goes away when you play the chord at large. Especially, I, I notice it like the G to F sharp. That dissonance really goes away. Really goes away. That made see that's so. Just so you know, the that's called a minor second. The inversion of a minor second, in other words, F sharp to G is a minor second. Um, the inversion of that is you take that minor, make it a major, you take this two and you subtract it from nine and you get seven. The inversion of a minor second is a major seventh. And so uh, F sharp to G is a minor second, G to F sharp is a major seventh. Um, and that also is dissonant. So both of those, minor second and major seventh, are equally distant, dissonant, um, but really disappears in the context of chord. There's also a, a major seventh in a major seventh chord, like G major seventh. See, that's dissonant. When I play the dyad, when I play the two notes, G and F sharp, but when I play it in the context of a, a G major seventh chord, it really disappears. So 
it's interesting, but that's, yeah, definitely seconds, minor seconds are dissonant. Seconds can be, can be kind of dissonant too, um, and minor sevenths too, but not as much as major sevenths and minor seconds. So that was a music theory lesson that you didn't ask for. Okay, so let me just play this down. I'll play it at 75 and see what we got. You can play with me if you want, if you, if you think you can read this. I will call, call out, I'll try to call out the new line. So if we get to the next line, I'll say, next line, next line, next, okay? Two, three, four. Next line. I'm concentrating. Next line. you up. I could have done that. just wanted you to be able to... Kind of ends weird, but again, I was trying to I was trying to get in all the notes that we've learned so far in here. I don't think I did the F sharp. Oh, I did do the F sharp on top, <clears throat> and the F sharp, the high F sharp, and the low F sharp, and the B flat didn't really show up until um, the bottom two two lines. And sorry, I for, I forgot to say new line every time. Orville, good to see you. So, so those are all uh, that that would be basically your you know uh, just a way to practice. Now I I I. I, I basically did a theme and then variation, 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 you know, da, 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 and then I did that multiple times. And then I did, da, 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 you know, did the thirds and, and then some harmonies and uh, back to the uh, melodic idea, da, 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 that kind of thing. Um, I, so it's almost exclusively seconds, like things are moving in, in scale tones, fairly simple. I didn't. I didn't want to do something that was really random. I wanted it to be somewhat musical. Really random stuff <clears throat> is great, but it's, it's kind of you know it's great for like really kind of hammering home some of that stuff, right? If I went. You know, did like some stockhouse and you know twelve tone kind of thing. Uh, that would be great uh, for maybe more advanced reading, but it's not something you're going to run across in the real world. So I want to prepare you more for, for melodic things that, you know, uh, for, for reading that's actually probably going to happen in your life. Okay. Whether you're reading classical jazz or, you know, uh, show tunes in a, in a pit band. Um, so, um, and again, if this is baby work, you can always move it up the fretboard and try to play it higher up the neck. Uh, that won't always work when we get to the low E string. There's only, one place you can play the low E and F and G and G sharp and F sharp, um, and then 
Uh, so you can't really move those ones, but we haven't gotten there yet. Now, next week, we're going to do the, um, the A string. We're going to add the A string going. Oh, who's on the island? How's island life going? Let's see. Orville, Orville's in, uh, is he uh, living on an island? Oh, is it? Is he on an island in, in, up in Washington State? I have a friend that just bought a, a house on a lake up in Washington, near Seattle. <laughs> Cole is an undertaker's smile. <laughs> I, I'm, I, you know, I, I can, I, I'm going to guess that Orville's not in his 20s. <laughs> he might have been born in the 20s. <laughs> uh, well, now, Orville, are you in the north, Northwest? Because if you're in the Northwest, uh, oh, Dennis was asking for some Cole. Oh, you guys have I thought I was looking at London. London's not hot. What the heck? I thought London was cold and rainy. Oh, no, it's warm there. 82. Oh, okay, well, that's not going to last. I, it, my degrees. 72 tomorrow, 64, 64. Those are cold, but those are cold temperatures and rainy in London. I did put Edinburgh on here. What's Edinburgh like? I just put this in last night, yeah. So it's 63 in Edinburgh. Of course, it's well, it's still daytime there. Well, I suppose it's always how how does the sun ever go down in the summer in, in Edinburgh? Oh, off the coast of Australia. Oh, nice. East coast of Australia. It's east. Yeah, east coast of Australia. Wow, that's crazy. What time is it there? And how do you have internet? <laughs> oh, wow. Bruce, oh, Florida got rain. Nice. We need that. You send that our way. <laughs> oh, well, Orville, it's winter. So it's winter in Australia. So what do you expect? See, we, I always forget that Santa Claus is always wearing shorts in Australia because it's hot there. <laughs> Whenever you see like Christmas decorations in Australia, it's like, Palm tree with lights on it, or Santa wearing shorts at the beach with a, with a, a pail and his <laughs> shovel, making a sandcastle. Lennon was having a heat wave, so that must have just happened because I was looking at the future temperatures. It looks pretty cold there, but Edinburgh is really not. I, my, I have a brother in law, I mean, my cousin lives in Bangkok. <laughs> it's like literally 90 and thunder shower showers every day, <laughs> 24, I mean, 365 days a year. I'm like, I, I, I don't know if I could do that. That's just like, really? That's crazy. He, they want us to come to visit. If I were an adventure traveler, I might, but I'm not much of an adventure traveler. Although bank or Thailand looks freaking gorgeous. Um, Remember those, remember the caves, the underwater caves that those kids got trapped in? That area is so gorgeous up there. Uh, it's just amazing. Oh, dang, dude. So, Orville, you just can't sleep? You get up early? Just wanted to hang out with us. I'm impressed. Are you an early riser or stay, a late stay or upper? Sorry, I, it's, I need the coffee to entertain you. So... Um, as far as this goes, you can scan this chart, and if you look from bar 45, the beginning, all the way to bar 72, nothing but quarter notes. And if you want, you can play those quarter notes as whole notes or half notes. You can give them four beats each or two beats each. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's only hot here if the roads are exactly. It's tires are sticking to the road. Um, but so you, you can scan it and go, okay, rhythmically, I'm not going to have any issues. Um, and then if you get to bar 73 and you're like, oh, okay, wait a minute, the rhythms might throw me off here a little bit. It's really not hard. It's just actually it's two quarters and a half, half and two quarters, basically. Uh, but you can clap it. That's another thing you can do too. Um, and that's another thing you can do with syncopated syncopated grooves or whatever, you can clap them until, until you really hear them. Um, 
We, we should have done that with the earlier stuff, but that's okay. Uh, all right. Oh, good. God bless you, Orville. It's awful cool of you. Um, I hate to stop the lesson now that you woke up to see it. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Mm, you see, I have my triple neck out here. Isn't that crazy? I bought that years ago. Um, I bought that actually from one of the founders of Matchless Amps. He, uh, he was their accountant, and uh, I guess they let him go, or they bought out his share of the company, and they gave him a bunch of amps. I think they gave him 20 or 30 amps. And so he was selling them, and I went over and I bought a Matchless Clubman, which is a great amp. I think he sold it to me for 850 which was a real good deal, even at the time. Um, if I look up, go to Reverb and look up a Clubman head, just the head. He didn't have the cabinets. He just had heads. Um, and my, again, mine's from early 90s. Um, let's see. Yeah, here's one for thirty-five hundred dollars. They've only have there's only one there, and I've, this one looks like mine, except the color's different. Um, what year is this? Yeah, my yeah, mine's mine sounds great. So it's a it's a good amp. It's a pretty a surprisingly high gain amp. It's it's pretty pretty gainy. Um, but I bought that, and then I. He, he said, oh, oh, thank you, Lena. He also said, um, awesome, Catherine. Yes, uh, I have a couple ouds, believe it. Well, funny, that's a, over right he, right, <laughs> right there, that's an Irish bazooki that I have tuned uh, as a mandolin, bass, like a bass mandolin. Um, so it's, but I do have an oud. I got um, just... This is my most recent acquisition. I just ordered something else yesterday, but uh, this is, I, I got, I wanted to have an oud that I could have real tuners on because the friction tuners is driving me crazy. This one actually has a, a tuner built in, which is really kind of handy. I didn't, I didn't think I'd use it, but boy, do I. But nylon strings in general tend to, and these are brand new strings. And I was, I was messing around with it yesterday. I was messing around with it yesterday and I realized where this um, filigree is here, the very top of it is, is, is the 12th fret essentially. Not the bolt, the bit body of it, but the very tip of it, right there. So, which kind of helps me. from uh, Egypt and then it's it's also flat back so it sits against me nice it doesn't have the boomy the bot the, this this D string doesn't sound as huge as it does on my real my round back oud um, but the trade-off I, I actually recorded some I did some mic tests where I uh, used both ouds and played similar parts and um, and this one is so much easier to play just because I can hold it against my body. It's not because the, the round back one just keeps slipping off my lap. Um, and, you know, there's there's ways to hold it. And I'm not really holding it right. And this one has a pickup in it, which is cool. So um, what that allows me to do is to kind of run it through some effects and weird stuff. I can even put distortion on it. Um, and, uh, and so...
I think a lot of times the, the bass strings are really just to center yourself. It's, I'm using more of my ear than my fingers. Kind of my my uh, um, point is uh, oh I, I, that's the gardener probably at the door so this is the point I want to move the lesson to when you say okay I need some music what can I play let's see I, I don't want to be careful because I, I don't want to play anything oh Beth got it okay good Beth is home so I so we talked about moving the lesson um, to Mondays. Uh, it's actually not a 12 string, it's 11 strings. Uh, it's got, yeah, the headstock has 12 tuners. So I, I think the headstock was intended for something else. Um, and then, the, yeah, so it's actually technically just 11 strings, like a normal oud. Yeah, I've never seen a 12 string oud either. Um, yeah, right? I need a Floyd Rose on that thing. <laughs> it would collapse. Uh, I actually, I, I want to get an, a fretless electric guitar. Um, I guess I could buy a cheap um, Squire. I'm real tempted to buy like a cheap Squire with humbuckers, maybe put a Sustaniac in it, and then um, have uh, uh, my guitar guy take the frets out and fill it. Because um, I could probably do something, like I could get a cheap Les Paul copy and do that. Because um, I've actually been having a lot of fun playing fretless bass, um, there's a fretless bass back there and the oud. Um, not the, the uh, where's my tumbi? My tumbi is technically fretless. <laughs> it's a technically a fretless. Uh, technically, uh, yeah, it should be playing. Hard to hold though. Um, technically, this is fretless too. Um, <laughs> it's a fretless uh, <laughs> broomstick. <laughs> this is an Indian instrument, so uh, I'm always picking up weird instruments. So I have just in case. You never know. Yeah, it's. I, I'm kind of thinking fret position, but I'm using my ear to tune it. So yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. I do have a fretless ukulele. That's right. That's a, it's a fun, fun tool. So um, anyway, I should probably get going. My gardener's talking to my wife about something. I think I think it, they're fixing that pipe. Um, and so I will talk to you all later. Uh, last, <laughs> last two. So I go out. Let's see. Thursday and Friday morning, I go out to run and there's a huge puddle of water on my neighbor's yard. And I'm like, dang, what happened here on the sidewalk? And then like, that's Thursday. Friday, I go out, and the sprinklers are on at 6 in the morning. I'm like, it should be on it. They kick out, too. My gardener had set one of the sprinkler sets, one of the zones. Instead of being take going at 2.40 in the morning, he set it for 240 minutes. <laughs> so man, ran for four hours the night before, and that's why it flooded my neighbor's sidewalk. And then it, it was like in the process of doing that again on Friday morning. I was when I went in the garage and I looked at the settings and I went, 240 minutes, what the heck? So he's working on it now. Hopefully he's not setting it there. Fretless triangle. Ooh. Hmm. Uh, actually, they have those things you dip in water and hit, the metal. Um, I forget what those are called. I, I Yeah, I've got, so I, what did I order? I ordered, oh, I ordered like a, a, a liar heart. Just a, you sit on a table, I think it's 10 strings, diatonic, major scale. Um, very simple little thing. I saw something I'd never seen before, and I really like it, but they're about 600 bucks, and I still want to get a hurdy-gurdy. So I need to have, I need to do a, uh, <laughs> a GoFundMe to go buy, to buy a hurdy-gurdy. Uh, it's really hard. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and maybe buy this $600 one 
from, I think it's from Ukraine. I'm touching my face so we can all take a sip. It's been a while since we talked about our drinking game. Okay. All right. Oh, Monday's good. Monday's not bad for you, John. Yeah, the nice thing about the nice, the good thing. Oh, Holly, God bless. Um, the the good thing about um, uh, Mondays is that sometimes Mondays are holidays, and I think we would have more viewers on Mondays. The bad thing is that Mondays are holidays, and sometimes I might want to be gone. Um, in that case, we'll just move it to Wednesday uh, on those weeks if if I'm going to be gone on a holiday Monday. But generally, I'm not. I don't generally go anywhere. Uh, but sometimes we do. And, you know, I don't want to miss a week. Um, I've talked about, we've talked also about doing a Zoom thing. Let's shoot for Monday next. I almost forgot we were getting together today, to be honest. Uh, I remembered last night, but it kind of snuck up on me, almost to the point where yesterday I thought, is today Wednesday? Did I miss our live stream? But I know that Bruce would have texted me like, are you going on today? <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I mean, I was... Okay, let me talk to the moderators here. Dennis, uh, Bruce, and Holly, are Mondays bad for you? Because if they're bad for you, um, yeah, I'm, Lena, I'm, I'm, so this instrument that I saw was, um, let me see where it is. I saved it. I, Etsy is a great place to get world instruments. I saved it in my cart. I didn't buy it, but oh, maybe they didn't let me save it. My cart is empty. Okay. Um, no. Uh, ba -dum -bum -bum. Yeah, I got my Nagoya harp. Wow. Oh, is that an acoustic one? Or is this electric? I want an acoustic one. Ooh, this is an acoustic one. Ooh. Uh, I'm tempted to. I'm tempted to grab this one because my Nagoya harp isn't very acoustic. It's cool, but I don't. Oh, wow. Shipping's expensive. All right. But what was the other thing I was looking for? Oh, yeah. Hurdy gurdies. So, no, that's not what I want. Um,. Updates. Here we go. Um, let's see. What is that harp? harp something harpa. What is that called? It's a cool instrument here. Ta uh, ta yeah, ta harpa. This is a. Is this a bass one? You play it with a bow, and it's, yeah, this is not a bass one, though. It's a bow, like a bowed lyre. It's really kind of cool. I really wouldn't mind getting one of those, too. Monday's good. Okay, Monday's good with Bruce. Uh, I don't mind, but I have Thursdays off, so Wednesday's fine, but I don't really mind it that much. Your own picks are low. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, so, the, so Monday, let's go Monday next week. Let's try to do Monday so I can be available to my gardener. Uh, if I need to be. Um, and then Mondays are good because it kind of gets, I get it out of the way <laughs> early in the week. And then I, you know, because I do tend to, Mondays tend to be a chill day for the most part. Um, I always get busy on the weekends. I got to church already. So I got, I got to play for three services. And, but I have composers that are always sending me stuff on weekends and they want it done by Monday or something. So if I have problems, you know, we'll push, but I'll probably push to Wednesdays instead of Tuesdays at this point. Um, so if we, that's the other nice thing about Monday is it's early in the week. If we need to push, we push into later in the week. Boom, done. Okay. So let's shoot for Mondays. I'll I'll uh, I'll put a I'll put a post on Facebook and Discord, um, and then hopefully we'll remember. And th the other nice thing is if I push to Friday, then people would show up on Wednesday and be like, "What happened?" Uh, this way, if people show up on Wednesday, they'd be like, "Wait, what happened? Oh, it aired Monday. Oh, okay. Well, I still can watch it then." So. Um, it's interesting because yeah, the 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 when I go to um, my YouTube, um, these people watch these afterwards. It's not like just the live content. So um, when I pull up the live stream, 
lessons, you know, they, they you know, with 600, 500, 600 views, 700 views, you know, um, 900. So the first lesson for music reading got 900 views, which is pretty good. I'm almost at 100% likes. We got 21 likes right now. Is it, wait, is that right? How many, how many likes do we have? 21 likes, kind of on the low side for us. Uh, we're at 24 viewers now. The peak was 28, so in the 20s. Yeah, do an announcement on Discord for me. Um, and then uh, that means I have to get on the next thing. Well, we're just going to learn the A string. So I'll do, um, I'm trying to, I, you know, I'm just kind of formulating this. I, I'm not, I don't have a big plan on, on the music reading thing, but we're, we're ending up with a book. How many pages do we have so far? We have two that are two pages. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so far, and nine lessons so far, and two or two pages. That's 11 pages of a book so far. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, <laughs> we could easily get to 100 pages. Uh, so we will, oh, somebody else gave money. Who else gave money? I see. Oh, Hook, thank you. Like it just jumped up to $30. Thank you so much. It's awful nice of you guys. I appreciate that. Um, and um, this is, uh, um, yeah, so so I'm going to do the A string. So what I may do is A, B, C, but I may show you the B flat, okay? Same time. Yeah, I'll do the same time. I'll still do 9 a.m. That works for me because I can get my run in. I can go get coffee. I get back. i got time to get the, get the OBS set up um, and then go. So uh, it was, I, I was, I got up late this morning. Normally I get up around 5.45, 6 o'clock. Today I got up at 7.30. But I was glad because I needed, I had been three or four nights in a row where I was getting six hours and I needed a good eight-hour night. Um, so uh, so I still ran and I still got, had time to get Starbucks. So it didn't really matter. But um, <laughs> that's all right, Aslan. You can send me happy thoughts. Just pray for me. Pray for my career. Pray for my family. I'll pray for all y'alls. Um, and uh, um, the um, so the the A string. So the question is: Am I gonna? Am I going to write out like are we going to review all five strings at that point or we just learn a, a and kind of hammer home i might just do a, the a string the d string and the g string uh, next week and make it a three a one page lesson and then we'll learn the low e string and then we'll kind of do the same thing e a d and then we'll do a review of all the strings um yeah yeah uh Okay, that's a good idea. So yeah, it's a nine PST slash twelve or noon EST, EST Eastern Time Eastern whatever. What is it? PST Pacific Standard Time. EST is Eastern. Something like that. But yeah, if you post it, Bruce, I'll, I'll post it on this the Facebook page. I, it's funny because I how many. I've got quite a few uh, followers on the Facebook page. Uh, in fact, I can do it right now. See. And if it's if it's small enough. No, new day. Sorry, not new time. Week. Monday, nine. Let's see, nine a.m. Pacific Pacific Standard Time, and that would be noon. Not non noon. Uh, Eastern Standard. Is it Eastern? What is it? Eastern time zone. Eastern, I was just going to put Eastern because I don't know. I don't know the symbol for Eastern. Can I? Is it? Okay, that's bright and orange. 
Oh, well, I should probably edit this. Let me see if I can edit it. Oh, it's a, yeah. That'll work. I don't, I should, I should probably, see I get, somebody sends me stuff in my inbox, but it just, yeah, see they're doing this new thing. How do I get, oh, she, is, oh, uh, Somebody's asking how to get the sheet music. What's the, and go to Tom's Lessons PDFs. Is it Tom-Lesson-PDFs? Okay, sorry. I, I get messages every now and then from, um, uh, Yeah. yeah. Somebody wants to take private lessons on Skype, but I just am not doing that. Uh, it, my rate is more than it's, it's sad, it's sad cuz you know, I understand it's like other parts of the world it's not <laughs> not like the US. You know, if I told them that my hourly for a lesson, <laughs> they would be like that's what I make a week. <laughs> So uh, that's just the, the reality of day savings, daylight saving time. Day, so DST, I don't know. It's a day, noon Eastern, yeah, noon Eastern. No, so daylight saving time is a, is a type of time. The zone is, so PST is Pacific Standard Time. EST is, I've never seen EST before. Am I smoking something? I just put Eastern on the Facebook announcement, so... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm based in Los Angeles. But you knew that, Orville. All right, so everyone is well, I hope. Thank you so much for um, joining, joining us this morning. Maybe on Monday, who knows, Mondays might be a better day ultimately. Uh, but it may be the first Monday might be a little on the low side because people will be expecting Wednesday and they won't log in to see. So... We might have to hammer some people. You might, you, uh, you, it, Bruce, if Holly and Dennis, if we don't see some certain normal people up, <laughs> not that we have any normal people here, but if we don't see certain people up, uh, we might have to um, uh, send out some private text messages. Okay. Yeah, six twenty one twenty one. That would be right, or twenty one six twenty one, depending on if you're in Europe or <laughs> here. That's one of those things that kind of, it's like, wait, wait, wait what? I mean, 21 6, 21 is not going to throw me off. Because immediately I go, oh, okay. But if it's like July 4th, they'd say 4 7. Wait, that's April 7th. There's no 21th, 21st month of the year. So immediately if I see 21 6, 21, I go, oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's June 21st. So today's the 16th. Yesterday they, they um, ended the mask mandate in California, um, although the governor kept all of his powers to do whatever he wants, which is, I think, wrong, unnecessary. Um, but uh, it was funny because I went into Starbucks without my mask on. Well, actually, before I even did that, because yesterday I wore my mask into Starbucks, but I don't wear my mask on the street. I never have, not one day. No, I just never have. I, I, I feel like God gave us a nose, and the nose directs our exhalant downward towards the ground. If I wear a mask, I it directs it in four different directions. Um, in other words, all over my neighbors. <laughs> so uh, I've never worn a mask except when required to in a shop. And um, I haven't worn masks at church. We've been meeting since July. They don't mandate it, so I didn't wear it, except for a few times. Um, and I do around a friend who's got cancer just to keep her safe. Um, although they've all, they've had their vaccines. So, um, but still I wear my mask around her to be considerate for her, but, um, uh, and they're getting ready to travel the world. So I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know. You know, that's going to be interesting. Um, hey, got your second jab. Oh, nice. C congrats. Congrats, Catherine. Um, but the uh, Starbucks, they took all the signage down in Los Angeles. They had zero signage for wearing masks or COVID or anything. It was all gone on the outside. So that's when I, I went, oh, okay. And I walked in, nobody in the shop was wearing masks in Los Angeles. No one in, in Starbucks, except the employees, were wearing masks. So the young people, are they're going to be wearing masks the rest of their lives, I'm afraid. They, they've been so freaked out by all this, uh, sadly, um, that they'll be wearing masks everywhere they go. But uh, like I said, I, 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 you know, I just, I think the, 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 the uh, negatives from mask wearing is, are worse than the positives, uh, particularly so psychologically, sociologically, um, breathing all that whatever crap is on your mask. Because I guarantee you, you don't wash your mask every time you use it. If you walk, if you go do four errands in four different stores, unless you wear the same mask the entire time, then you're you know. And the other thing is, if I go into Starbucks and and COVID, you know, you're in a closed quarters. COVID's all over that mask. If there's, COVID is in the air. And so if I keep wearing that mask, then I'm exposing myself to it. As soon as I get out of a store, I took that mask off because I figured if there's any germs, it's gonna I'm going to get them in the store, not outside where the ceiling is, you know, five miles. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, were, I almost got hit by a bus because my glasses fogged up and I walked into the street and the bus ran the red light and I didn't see it because my glasses were fogged up. So, because I forgot to take off my mask when I got out of a store and I was like, I was like walking out of the store and I was walking across the street and it's like a bus almost hit me. It would have been a COVID death. It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, see, Catherine, that's your job. And you've always had that. Um, yeah, no kidding. It's super uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know how you do it. I, could, I couldn't do that job. I don't think. I don't think. My wife had to wear one for school. But even when at the end there, she was taking it. Now the kids didn't care. And she had plastic in front of her. It's like with a mask on and plastic, you're trying to teach kids in a room, you know, seventh graders. I mean, come on. This is, it's very difficult for everybody to hear you. And you got kids online that you're teaching at the same time you're teaching kids in a class. That's, it was brutal. She, she is amazing. She did that. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm still here, <laughs> Carrie, but not much longer. I'm getting ready to take off. Let me see if everybody knows that. Oh, look at that. It stayed real static, real solid at 20. Kind of in the 20s, low 20s almost this whole time here. Amazing. All right. So uh, I'm going to take off. God bless you all. Thank you for the, for the, uh, for the revenue. I appreciate the, the, uh, the money, the love. That, that helps. Um, and we will, uh, we will learn the A string next week on Monday. Next Monday, Gary, we're, we're swapping to Mondays. I hope it's okay. Uh, we're going to go to Mondays. And that way we have the whole week to push to if I can't do Monday for whatever reason. Okay? Hopefully I'll remember. <laughs> Bruce, you might want to send me a, a text Sunday night. <laughs> I'll send you a text Sunday morning to remind me to send it. Remind you to send me a text Sunday night. Yeah, the masks are, yeah, I, I feel bad for kids because, you know, you know, uh, by the way, just a little psychological psychology lesson here. Um, babies learn facial expressions from their fathers. And that's why kids, uh, adults that are generally very stoic, oftentimes grew up without a father when they were babies. Because uh, dads will go, blah, 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 you know, like that, right? <laughs> Catherine's still here, so I can do this. Ah! <laughs> yeah, but dads will do all the crazy face stuff and moms provide the comfort dads provide the uncomfort. And, um, uh, and so with the masks, the little kids are not getting that kind of interaction and it's not just dads. It's just everybody, the people, the faces, things like that. So it's going to be interesting. We're going to have psychological ramifications and, and I guarantee in five years, you're going to get all sorts of commercials on TV saying, do you, do you have cotton lung? You can sue Johnson & Johnson now for your money, but, you know, from everybody wearing a mask. Uh, it's probably going to create some kind of lung problem there. So um, <laughs> stay for the mask misinformation. Yeah, I'm sure it's misinformation. I don't care. <laughs> Just telling you, I don't think I think uh, your nose is doing sending things to the ground. That's where it should go. So anyway, um, we're done here. I will see you all on Monday, if at all possible. 
And uh, yes, I, I am not a doctor, Steve. <laughs> yes, get your dad jokes ready for the weekend. That's right. I forgot. I, I, I didn't see anybody laugh at the Dimitri Martin joke that I told. Um, but we're going to, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, let's see, where's, there we go. All right. So I will see you all on Monday and, uh, we will try that new time and see how we do. Okay. And, um, then we will learn the new string and that's it. That's, uh, let's see. All right. You're welcome, Roger. God bless you. Happy Father's Day, Gary. Happy Father's Day, Bruce. Who else is a father here? Steve, I don't know if you're a dad, but happy Father's Day if you are. I've got three kids. You know Alex. Uh, hey, maybe maybe we may do a Father's Day jam. I think we did one last year, so maybe we'll do a Father's Day. I didn't even realize it was Father's Day this weekend. I think Daryl Strawberry is actually speaking at my church this weekend so for Father's Day, which is kind of cool. So... Oh, you're you're a uh, you're a senior epidemiologist. Awesome, Lena. Well, I'm just uh, I'm just worried about all the. We're, there are going to be a lot of books written in ten years about this. We're going to know a lot more in ten years about all this crap than we know now. But I, I guarantee you, it was there was a lot of overreaction on a lot of people on all sides. So, well, happy Father's Day to everyone who's a father, and I will see you all on Monday, so it won't be Father's Day, but but maybe Father's Day. You may keep your, you know, keep the notifications turned on. If Alex and I do a jam, then you can see that, okay? I'll leave it up so you can see it anyway. God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye.